The Palomar Cancer Institute is going to be all about family. I get to understand their story, what they've been through in their life, and how to get them back to that story, help them defeat the fear of cancer, get through that journey, and you get to see the real person emerge underneath the illness. We're going to put a lot of time and energy into making sure that you get the experience that, that we would want if we were patients. At Palomar Health, we are the leaders in quality and expertise in the region. Hilltop versus East Lake, live this Thursday on Your View. Believe it or not, week seven in the high school football season here in San Diego County. We're going to look back at week six and look ahead to our upcoming games. It's John Schaefer and Jonathan Rifkin with you here, Left Coast Sports, presented by Palomar Health. A reminder, you can catch high school football this weekend, game time on Your View Channel 4. La Jolla Country Day at Bishop's. That's Saturday at 7 p.m. We'll break that day, uh, game down coming up. Also, this episode brought to you by Palomar Health. Champions aren't made overnight. They're created through practice, determination, and dedication. Palomar Health, champions of healthcare, champions for you. So we'll get you ready again for week seven, Jonathan, but we'll look back as well at some games here in week six, including La Jolla Country Day over Army Navy, handing Army Navy its first loss of the season, 35-6. What do you make of that result? It's an interesting result because La Jolla Country Day hasn't historically been a team that is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you offensively. Army Navy is a team that this year is facing a bit of a resurgence. Um, they have a couple of guys who are getting post-grad looks out in college, whether it's D1 or D2 or D3. And that always poses difficulty for some lower division teams, right? Because it's harder to get those guys to your schools if it's based on uh, previous performances in the years past or if it's based on your school's attendance. Uh, a lot of those guys, especially North County, end up going to some of the Palomar League schools or some of the uh, avocado schools as well. So it, it gets a little dicey, but Army and Navy coming into this game, it felt like they could be competitive. And then La Jolla Country Day, a team that we're going to be seeing on Saturday, John, really laid it to them. And, and it's been a testament to La Jolla Country Day. They're five and one this season coming into this game. And they're a team, again, that hasn't historically been one of the more dominant teams in North County, San Diego. And yet here they are uh, really showing their poise offensively. 35 to six was the score, score of this game. I think La Jolla Country Day might be towing that top 20 uh, area of our San Diego section rankings. Five and one overall. Uh, the quarterback thrown for nearly 200 yards, four touchdowns. Madden Craig, two touchdown receptions. Army Navy suffers his first loss of the year, falling to four and one overall. All right, modern day Catholic. We saw them earlier this season. They've won a couple in a row now, Jonathan. They beat St. Augustine 23 14. They do so behind Cartel Purvis, who had a really good game in the victory for modern day. Yeah, you talk about Purvis, a guy who hasn't had a ton of time in the pocket, somebody that we got to see um, on the wrong end of what was a really tough game against Lincoln. But yep. you could see that the pieces were there, and now finally they are starting to fall in place for modern day Catholic. The defense has become stellar. The offensive line has given Purvis more time. They have Isaiah Buxton, who continues to be one of the more formidable wide receivers here in the San Diego section. And at halftime, they were trailing by one. It was 14 to 13. They missed the PAT. And then 10 points ripped off in the third quarter and some stellar defense forcing the Saints goose eggs in the second half. And uh, Brady Palmer, just a sophomore for St. Augustine, probably going to be really, really good. But uh, a bit of a learning curve. He had that interception uh, 13 for 196 through the year. Still pretty good running game. Just wasn't able to get it going to 3.2 yards per carry. Again, the testament to the front seven for modern day Catholic. So this is a Crusader team. We talked about it, John, in that loss to Lincoln last year. They were 0 3 to or 0 and 4 yeah. rather to start the season. They went on to win a state championship. I don't know. It, it, it sort of feels like maybe history could repeat itself. They're heading towards conference play. And this is a conference they should handle pretty easily. East Lake, maybe the only contender in there. So uh, keep your eyes on modern day Catholic the rest of the way. Yeah, Jordan Jackson in this game, 59-yard touchdown run for modern day Catholic. Anthony McMillan, um, the recruit. Is he heading for San Diego State? Is he a San Diego State? Yes, he, he is San committed. Yes. That's right. Committed to San Diego State. Anthony McMillan had a touchdown as well for modern day Catholic in that victory over St. Augustine. All right, Granite Hills uh rolling by Madison. A shutout win 31 to nothing. 
uh, this past weekend as well. Yeah, Madison's a team coming into the season felt like they're probably the best defense in San Diego. When they played that game against Helix, I really thought that they were going to show us a little bit more, especially with the safeties, but uh, that game got away from them and they just have not been able to recover offensively. It's been a bit of a struggle. And Granite Hills, I mean, they picked up right where they left off uh, two years ago when they really bursted onto the scene. They had a quarterback who is now playing at Southwest Minnesota State, which is a really, really good Division II program. A couple of other D2 and D3 products were surrounding him. People were questioning whether or not Granite Hills would be able to keep up what was one of their more successful seasons in recent program history, and they have not missed the beat. I mean, they're probably the number three team in San Diego, Carlsbad, Lincoln, interchangeable, in my opinion, depends on who you like and what you'd like to see out of uh, the top teams and how you evaluate them. But Granite Hills is right there. This is a really good Madison team. They faltered after the loss to Helix, um, and there wasn't really a ton going for them in this game. So I don't know. Uh, Granite Hills, another team coming off a state championship. I think that this, I, let me just put this as an aside, John. We hmm. might have more state champions in San Diego, out of San Diego this season than we've ever had before. I think that we're seeing teams at division one, two, three, and four, and maybe five that are all that all possess the ability to go to the state level to win their individual divisions in San Diego, represent the section at the state level, and maybe walk out of here with a couple of wins. So I'm excited to see some of these teams um, and, and their abilities to, to continue to push this path forward to the state championship. It's interesting you say that a little bit of a golden era, maybe. I mean, again, Lincoln with the state title a year ago, modern day Catholic, it's, it's back to back, isn't it? They've gone back yep. to back with the, the state only, title. Uh, the only team ever in San Diego. So, I mean, who knows with modern day Catholic, like you said, I mean, maybe it's deja vu all over again, all over again. And Granite Hills, again, has gotten off to a really good start here over Madison this past weekend, 31 to nothing. So it is week seven. Believe it or not, there are a number of games we wanted to kind of look at. We will also, of course, look at our game on Saturday, La Jolla Country Day and Bishops coming up Saturday at 7 p.m. But let's start with La Costa Canyon and Poway and your pre preview of that one coming up this weekend. Yeah, Poway coming off their bye week. They lost to Del Norte a couple weeks ago. They were up, they were on the wrong side, I should say, of a 21 0 start for the Nighthawks in that game. And then uh, Poway, the Titans, were able to make it a ball game, ended up losing 28 20. But coming out of a bye week, things typically feel a bit rejuvenated. Uh, this is an offense and a running game. This, in terms of historic, not historically, in terms of recent running game for Poway, probably some of the best running backs in terms of the group and how they. Uh, perform in this system in all of San Diego. You know, the running coach is incredibly well, well respected. The question is, is how are they going to do in a more competitive league, right? They beat, they won the Palomar, Palomar league last year. They're now in the avocado league. La Costa Canyon, a top 10 team in San Diego. It doesn't matter who you're talking to. I think everybody agrees. Maybe top six, maybe top eight, depending again, how you want to evaluate that team. But John Sovacool has one of his better teams in his illustrious coaching career with the Mavericks. And this is a team that has never faltered in league. They've struggled to get to that D1 championship um, over the last decade or so, but they're always competitive and po uh, Poway now going into a more competitive league, uh, maybe a bit more intensity. So, what kind of Poway team are we going to see? Are we going to see a team that is confident in themselves, especially coming off of a loss prior to the bye week, that they they belong in this league? Or are we going to see a, a bit of intimidation from La Costa Canyon that forces Poway into some tough spots? So I'm more interested in the identity of this game. Again, a, a seasoned La Costa Canyon team, young talent, but a, a school that's been in the Avocado League and pretty successful for a, quite some time and a Poway team that is new. Uh, a debutante, if you will, into hmm. this new league. So I'm I'm intrigued by the storyline surrounding this game. I like that. I like that breakdown. And I know, obviously, when we look ahead here, Del Norte, Rancho Bernardo, you've been acutely familiar with Del Norte because you've been calling their games. They're four and one on the season, basically at the midway point. What are your expectations for this weekend? Yeah, this is this will be the most advertised game in San Diego. It's not the best game in terms of hmm. matchup on the field. It's Eric Weddle, 2000 and yep. what year did they win the Super Bowl? 21, 20? Yeah, you know. It's just a couple won, years ago. Yep. Yeah, 2021. He, you know, he was assistant coaching football, gets the call by the Rams to come Amazing. play linebacker for them, and then ends up being a key piece to a defense that wins a Super Bowl in Los Angeles. Retires from football, takes a year off. Breaking news last year, Eric Weddle is being named the head coach of Rancho Bernardo High School for the 2024 school year. It's fascinating. This is a Rancho Bernardo team that wasn't that good last year, but 
when you have a coach who's played in the league, especially defensively, that's the key, especially a, a defensive minded head coach who's played in the league, things are going to improve. And Rancho Bernardo, you know, they're still not winning games at the clip. I think you would expect them to with a coach like this, but they're way more competitive than they were a year ago. Del Norte, four and one, first time ever in the school's history that they're in the top 10 in San Diego in any of the rankings, whether it's UT or whether it's some of the social media pundits, KUSI, what have you. Um, everybody agrees they're a top 10 team. That one loss was to, uh, to La Costa Canyon. Probably could have won that game. Uh, but it was really sloppy on both sides. Garbage time touchdown for the Mavericks ended up making the score a little bit more unreachable than it actually felt while they were playing the game. Um, Nick Barnett, first year head coach, won a Super Bowl with the Packers in 2012. Hmm. Southern California native, a guy who has taken Del Norte to its best start in school history. There's been a little bit of smack talk by Eric Weddle on social media as well. Hmm. Nick Barnett has elected to stay off of social media. Uh, and and it, he has been said in our some of our conversations that he is going to let the the play on the field do the talk and getting a, a bit of an Oregon Colorado vibe with this. So um, definitely something to an, again another storyline to keep in mind. Everybody's going to be there. There are they're expecting sold out attendance. They're going to have two um, portable like scoreboard big boards in the build or in the stadium. So they're going all out on this one. I'm looking forward to this call and my expectation it's going to be close. Rancho Bernardo was trailing by 21 points last year in the second half and ended up coming back to win against Del Norte on the road. So uh, can history repeat itself or can Del Norte continue their hot start? I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. I'm looking forward to it again. You'll be on the call for Del Norte. Now, what does Mission Hills have in store for themselves against Carlsbad and Julian Sayan? Carlsbad now 5-0 and on the year. Is there any stopping them um, on their path here in 2023? I don't think there's any, stop, any stopping this team. Yeah. I think that the only team that will probably stop this team or could stop this team in terms of talent, in terms of layers at each position group that could be competitive, is Lincoln. Mm -hmm. We're not going to probably see this matchup until the Open Division Championship albeit something crazy happens and things shift around a little bit, but these two teams are on a collision course. Mission Hills is probably the best bet in league play to stop Carl's bat. It's a, a Mission Hills team that's probably top six in San Diego, top five, again, depending on where you look, whether it's Max Preps, whether it's um, San Diego Union Tribune or, or uh, Sport, Scorebook Live or what have you. Um, but Mission Hills coming in four and one, two and no at home, two and one on the road. They have 121 points for to 60 points allowed. So that's a two to one ratio in touchdowns scored versus touchdowns given up. Very good defense. Strength of schedule is incredibly impressive. Um, <laughs> but is it enough to be able to stop one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, if not the best quarterback in the nation who's going to Alabama? I don't know. Again, this is a team of Carlsbad that hasn't played a close game yet all season. They had a nationally televised game where they won by over 25 points. Um, but Mission Hills is the best bet in league play to stop Carl's bad this season. So I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big believer in upsets. I'm a big, big believer in the underdog, especially at the high school level, because these kids have unwavering belief in themselves. And so definitely something to keep an eye on, on a seven fifteen kick on Friday night. Speaks to the strength though, overall of, of San Diego. And like you said, teams coming out of here, potentially to win state titles, Carlsbad uh, cruising to this five and zero start behind Julian saying, all right, let's get to our game this weekend. It is a Saturday night game. We've been usually having Thursday night games for you here. Game time on your view. This Weekend, La Jolla Country Day at Bishops. It is Saturday night at 7 p.m. You're going to be on the call. What are your expectations for Saturday night? It's a battle for La Jolla, right? I mean, Bishops Impressive. already lost round one of that battle. That was against La Jolla High School in their season opener, 41-19. Both these teams really struggled out the gates this season. Both these teams are incredibly talented and lost the teams they probably shouldn't have lost to. Christian is not a team... If he, I just saw it on paper and didn't see the score, I would have thought would have gone on the road from El Cajon to La Jolla and beaten Bishops 20 to 10. Just like to open up the season, I wouldn't have guessed prior to this happening that La Jolla was going to go on the road to Chula Vista, albeit a Chula Vista team that has been wildly advertised as one of Howard Bannister's best teams uh, in quite some time. I would have not anticipated La Jolla Country Day going on the road and losing 48 to 26. Both these teams have regathered themselves and the continuity and chemistry is finally coming together. Good wins for La Jolla country day coming off of that loss. Now they've ripped off four straight. Uh, the bigger win was two weeks ago. Coronado handling that team, 48, 17 Crawford, 37 to seven. That's a good team in Crawford as well. Uh, lower division team. And then that army Navy game. I mean, again, this was a team in army Navy that wasn't touched 
offensively the entire season until this game. They only put up six points. Gave up 35 La Jolla Country Day with a, a quarterback who's incredibly dynamic. Uh, a guy who leads the team both in passing and in rushing. And Mangini, he is 97 for 508 on the ground with hmm. 10 rushing touchdowns. He is 63 for 811 yards with 11 passing touchdowns. You're talking about a guy through six weeks in the season, John, who has 21 total touchdowns and almost 1,500 all-purpose yards. That is an unbelievable clip. He's leading San Diego in terms of quarterbacks in that, and uh, I'm excited to see what he brings. Now, let's go to Bishops, a team, again, faltered out of the gate, got a huge win at Mount Miguel. Didn't get a ton of respect before that. People are starting to pay attention now. Their quarterback is a sophomore. His name is uh, Cash Herrera, one of the best names in all hmm. of the San Diego section. And this is a team that likes to mix it up a little bit more. They like to carry the ball more than like to throw, but they haven't been successful carrying the ball. Offensive line isn't fantastic. La Jolla Country Day's front seven, probably their weakness. So are we going to see a Bishops team that is going to abandon the run because the passing game has been more fruitful for them? Or are we going to see a team that in uh, in Bishops that is going to take advantage of the fact that La Jolla Country Day's front seven may be a bit weaker than some of the previous opponents that Bishops has played, and they're going to incorporate the run game a little bit more um, into this into this game than what we've seen in the previous games. I don't know. I'm excited. Again, I'm excited to say Cash Herrera's name. I hope he gets a couple of touchdowns this game because uh, he's he might be money. You know what I'm talking about. I like this it. Is gonna be a, it's going to be a fun game. Bishop's a, a powerhouse. Tyler Buckner, of course, who's now backing up at Alabama. Um, started at Notre Dame. Was supposed to go to Helix. Didn't end up playing, but great at Bishop's. Um, probably the more notable of the recent Bishop's alum, but a, team, a program that's put out really good talent uh, at all levels of the next uh, stage of football and La Jolla Country Day team that's finally figuring out that uh, they could be really competitive in this county for sure. Has the makings of a really good game. We'll have it for you Saturday night. Your View Channel 4 game time on Your View. By the way, our next game will be the following Thursday night, October 5th. Hilltop at East Lake. That'll be Thursday, October 5th, our fifth game of our nine game slate here in San Diego County. Uh, can I cut you off here really quickly, John? Yeah, what do you got? East Lake. A team that has not did not win a game prior to this past week. They were what 0 and 4, 0 and 5. They go to Chicago to take on a team oh, yeah, from Hammond. Yeah, I brought it up. They, I mean, again, a team very good defensively. Their offense has been tough. On the road to Chicago, play a team from Hammond, Indiana, and pick up their first win of the season. That is really impressive to me. I think that could be a turning point for the East Lake Titans. And uh he'll top a team that hasn't totally been competitive this season but you could see the the pieces are there so this actually could be a really really good game between east lake and hilltop so definitely something to keep your eye on this weekend as they both play and then our game next weekend as well yeah basically two games for you over the course of five days saturday night the next thursday night we'll have it for you again our high school football game of the week game times your view channel four or game times high school football game of the week on your view channel for a reminder this episode brought to you by palomar health champions Aren't made overnight. They're created through practice, determination, and dedication. Palomar Health, champions of healthcare, champions for you. Jonathan, enjoy the calls this weekend. You got a couple of really good ones, and we'll catch up again next week and get ready for another week of high school football in San Diego County. Looking forward to it, John. All right. For Jonathan Rifkin, I'm John Schaefer. You've been watching another episode of Left Coast Sports right here on Your View. Your View.